All right, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Well, good evening, everybody. I'm Apostle Dr. Linda Herbert. On behalf of my husband, Apostle Jeff, and I, we want to thank you for joining us tonight for our Phase 3 of our discipleship course. This is the first class in Phase 3, and uh, this uh, section, this phase, is going to talk about uh, the pro prophetic. And uh, just by way of a little more of an introduction, uh, for those of you who are just tuning in and have not been a part of our discipleship classes, amen. Uh, we just want to explain uh, very briefly uh, that uh, we have four phases to our discipleship course. And uh, you can go online to our website. It's www.covenant-life-church.org. And on that site, you'll find that there is a command line. If you tool around there, uh, you'll find a uh, command that says Discipleship Course. And if you double-click on that Discipleship Course, uh, you will find out that there's a Phase 1 and a Phase 2 that we've already uploaded to that site. And all of our classes are free. Amen. And you can go in there and you can double-click those, those courses, and uh, you will be able to listen in on every single one of them. So after this class tonight, as a matter of fact, uh, we'll be um, uploading also uh, to our, our, our website, and uh, you'll be able to see this, this course also. And we're also going to post this, as long as we're doing the media, uh, we are going to post this on our uh, Facebook site. So between our website and our Facebook, you will be able to see and hear all of these discipleship courses. And uh, we, invite, we invite you to do that. Amen. And uh, so the, the, the background story is the Lord uh, had sent some new uh, be believers into our, our church. And uh, the Lord said to me one morning, what are you going to do about that? <laughs> Amen. We were used to getting uh, uh, seasoned saints, you might say, um, that had already been walking with the Lord for a while. And uh, God was moving them into the gifts of the Spirit and uh, wanted us to be training. And that's one of our base foundational anointings for at Covenant Life Church. We raise and train. Amen. And we activate in, in all of the gifts of the Spirit, in the prophetic and, and the apostolic. And so uh, so the Lord uh, uh, enlarged our ten phase by sending us babies, uh, spiritual babies, and people, you know, just been saved. And praise God, you know, and the, and the Word talks about uh, that we are to disciple and so, uh, so we saw it as a uh, promotion that God was now entrusting us with, with his spiritual babies. Amen. And we were honored. Amen. So uh, we developed this, uh, this discipleship course. And uh, the course takes you from what I call A to Z. Amen. And so in phase one, we have some very foundational things that talk about Christian ethics and uh, basic Bible. Uh, that's really for a new believer uh, who's not familiar with, with, with the Bible. So we start from A, all right, just like, you know, kindy, kindergarten. Uh, no, no offense to anybody. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a whole training program. And so we take you from A to Z, and uh, right now we're in phase three, which is the pr prophetic. And uh, these, this is going to be ten courses, excuse me, ten classes in this phase. We're starting tonight, of course, and then... Uh, every Monday night, we'll be doing the uh, pr prophetic for the next 10 weeks, uh, except for Memorial Day weekend. We'll take that Monday off. And, uh, but you can see our schedule. If you go onto our website, you will, you'll find our schedule. And uh, right now, we have Pastor Andrea. Uh, her and her husband uh, function as our assistant pastors, you might say. And uh, she's on the chat. So if you're tuning in tonight and uh, you don't know anything about our dis discipleship course or where to where to find it or whatever you can chat with her make sure she has your email address and we'll even send out the schedule to you amen but uh, there's going to be 10 classes in this section and then after this phase four which is our last phase of the entire course we're going to go into demonology we're going to go into spiritual warfare and demonology casting out demons we're going to talk about that amen so that's that's the a to z so if you get the whole course you'll get uh, I don't want to say a Reader's Digest of the whole Bible, but uh, it'll be an overview of the, uh, of the Bible from A to Z. Amen? All right. Praise God. So again, our website is 
www.covenant-life-church.org. And everything is, is free. So we invite you to check out our website tonight. Amen. And, of course, all these things, uh, all these media, uh, you know, events right here have been are, uh, uploaded onto Facebook. And uh, we're going to go ahead and, and leave them there so that uh, later on people can see all of these classes once again. Amen. So with that, let's go ahead and start with prayer. Father, we just come before you right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we stir the anointing right now in Jesus' name. We stir up the prophetic and the apostolic. Father, we thank you right now that, Lord, you're giving us ears to hear, eyes to see, and a mouth to speak. Father, we thank you for this night. We thank you for those who have joined us, Father God. Amen. Even those who are going to be passing through on hits on, on this site, Father. Yes, God. We release an anointing upon them right now in Jesus' name. And Father, if by chance there's somebody passing through that doesn't know you as their personal Savior, Father, I ask you that you would draw them by your Spirit in the name of Jesus. And if you don't know Jesus tonight, amen, that's the most important thing you could ever do, amen, in your entire life is invite Jesus into your heart as your personal Savior. No matter how gifted you are, amen, it's all about knowing Jesus, amen, because without the shed blood of Jesus, you're never going to go to heaven and you'll spend eternity in hellfire. You've got to accept Jesus. Amen. It's a so simple thing to do. Amen. I'm just going to lead you right now into uh, the salvation prayer. Just by chance, if somebody's passing through, I got prompted earlier today. We normally don't even do this, at, especially at the beginning like this. But the Lord knows what's going on. Amen. So we're going to follow his lead. That's part of the prophetic. You're going to learn. Flow. You always flow with the Spirit. He's like a dancing partner, and you're going to dance with him. Amen. He's going to lead, and we're going to follow. My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. We're just following him. So if you want to accept Jesus in your heart tonight, all you got to do is say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and forgive me my sins. I want to live for you in Jesus' name. And if you don't speak in tongues tonight and you want to speak in tongues, amen, that's a free gift also that the Holy Spirit gives to everybody. la di da and everybody, whoever wants it. Amen. He says, whosoever will may come. Amen. Just like salvation. And it's a free gift. Whosoever will may come. Amen. So if you want the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, all you got to do is say, Lord Jesus, baptize me in Jesus' name. Lord, give me, that, give me that gift with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Because, beloved, everything is by faith. Amen. Be it done unto you according to your faith. Amen. You can believe God for anything. Amen. So you just pray that way, and, you're, and believe me, it's going to come on you. Amen. So, Father, we just seal the word now tonight. In Jesus' name, we stir up the anointing. In Jesus' name, Father, Lord, have your way tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. So, tonight, we're going to talk about the uh, pr prophetic. Amen. Praise God. And uh, we're specifically in this uh, first uh, in introductory class. Okay, we're going to talk about the restoration of the gifts. And uh, we're starting right here. This is kind of a, it's a foundational uh, perspective about the restoration of the gifts. Uh, some of you who are Pentecostals that are listening on, you may already be used in this in the gifts of the Spirit, but it's always good to go over it again, amen, and get some basic found, foundational truth. And for those of you who don't speak in tongues or don't haven't been used in the gifts of the Spirit, it's going to be very important that you hear these scriptures. And I would uh, invite you also, pardon me, as you're, as you're listening in tonight, uh, write these scriptures down, okay? And please, just like any other uh, uh, block of instruction, uh, or when, when you go to school, take notes, amen? And uh, write the scriptures down. Go back and look at the scriptures for yourself, amen? Study them, meditate on them, and you will find that as you're doing that, the Spirit is going to begin to speak to you more and more about it. And He's going to reveal to you Himself, amen? So, I'd like you to go ahead and turn with me to uh, 2 Peter uh, chapter 1, verse 12. Amen. And, uh, amen. Glory to God. We're going to start with this scripture tonight. All right. Thank you, Lord. And in fact, I'm going to back up just to get the context just, just a, a little bit. All right. So this is uh, Peter. Amen. Uh, the, the Apostle Peter. And uh, he's speaking to the, to the church at uh, large. And the scriptures prior to this, amen, yeah, he's been telling us, like in verse 4, that we've been given exceeding great and precious promises. Amen. The whole word of God is exceeding great and precious promises. Amen. 
that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So there's always lust in some kind of format. Lust of the eyes, you know, lust for money, lust for something. And he says in verse 5, but also for this very reason, giving diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For those of you who are just joining us, we're in 2 Peter uh, chapter 1, and we're reading from verse 4. And now we're in verse 8. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm getting an unction right there. Think about that. If you can add that list, amen, to your character and your, your behavior, it says that you will not be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from old sins. You see, sin brings some blind, blindness to us. Amen. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and your election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. Now, there's a good tip right there, praise God. The, the, the Holy Spirit tells us if we make our election and our call sure, we, we're not going to stumble. See, the scripture says, walk in your calling. Amen? Walk in your calling. What is your calling tonight? If you don't know what you're called to be and do, get with the prophets and find out. Amen? Because they can prophesy over you, and God will reveal at least a part of your calling. Amen? Verse 11. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For this reason, look at verse 12. For this reason, I will not be negligent to remind you always of these things that you know and are established in the present truth. So ministers, pastors, fivefold, and I'll get to that in a minute. Amen. It says here that Peter was not negligent to remind you always of those things. See, there's some things that we got to be reminded of. Amen? Praise God. So that we're established in the present truth. Now, that's a term that sometimes people don't realize that's in that scripture. The term present truth. It doesn't mean that there's uh, something that was not in the word from the foundation of the world. It was always there. But you see, in God's eternal timeline... Some things are revealed at certain points in his timeline. Amen? And that's one of those things we're going to talk about some of that tonight. It's just like salvation. Salvation, which was a free gift by faith, and, and how you get saved, was revealed at a certain point in, in time. Okay? So I just want to throw that, throw that out there. Um, I also want you to turn... Uh, let's see here. Let's go to Acts. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. 319 says, Repent therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send Jesus Christ, who was preached to you before, whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. So this scripture is telling us that Jesus is held, see whom, he, who, verse 21, whom heaven must receive until the time of restoration of all things. There is a time that the Lord is going to come. 
And it will be when all things, all prophetic words have been, all everything that's been prophesied has been fulfilled. And it says here that the times of respiration are, of all things have been re, uh, fulfilled. And so God is restoring. He's restoring the fivefold. He's restoring things that the enemy tried to steal and take from us. So there's a timeline that God has. Amen? Now, historically, biblical history shows that there is a progressive restoration through the Holy Spirit's illumination of truth that has always been here. It's just that our eyes were blinded and we didn't see it. You know, how many out there right now have read Scripture? Uh, you, know, it, you know, you read Scripture time and again, but it wasn't quickened to you. But that one time you were reading the scripture and boom, you caught the revelation. And that's what we call a rhema. That scripture was illuminated, amen, and made a now word in your spirit. And that's what we call rhema. It was, it was quickened to you. It was made alive to you. It's just like the other day, the uh, Lord, he said to me, and I know this scripture, I've read it many times. And he said, <laughs> he said to me, my my mercies are new every morning. Like, doy? I mean, that's, you know, I, I know that. But in that moment when I was praying, it was quickened and made alive in my spirit. And it just excited me, like I'm getting happy right now. His mercy is new every morning. I was really struggling with praying for some people. And I was reaching out to the Lord and saying, Lord, will you just shake them up? <laughs> Will you wake them up to righteousness? Get them out of their sin. What's wrong with them? They're being stupid. And they're, and they're in sin. And the time is short. Amen? And we don't need to be in sin in the middle of a plague. And all this demonic activity and the devil looking for to see who he can take out next. I said, Lord, wake them up. And the Lord spoke to me. And he said, my mercies are new every morning. And then I knew how to pray. I said, Lord, have mercy on him. Amen. But that was a now word for me. Amen. And so the Lord quickened that. He, he quickened that to me. And it became like a present truth. Amen. Right now. Amen. So what the Spirit is trying to tell us is that he illuminates parts of, of the Logos word. This is the Logos, the word of God. He illuminates different things at different times and he quickens us in our spirit and he awakens us he awakens us to it amen praise god thank you jesus let's take a look at ephesians uh 117 okay i hope everybody's with me you're probably faster than i am this also is one of my favorite passages Amen. Praise God. Ephesians 1.17 That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, so that the eyes of your understanding, see, it's the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him that leads to the eyes of our understanding being enlightened. That And then we can know, see verse 18, that we can know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And not only that, but what's the exceeding greatness of his power, praise God, towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Amen? And so uh, while we're going through this phase, keep praying these scriptures that the eyes of your understanding are enlightened. Amen? that we can understand what God has called us to. Amen? It's like awakening to righteousness. It's awakening to the prophetic. It's awakening to the present truth of this hour, of what God is revealing. Okay? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Deuteronomy 29, 29 says, The secret things belong. So there's secret things. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God. But those things, but those things that are revealed. So right there we know that we might not get revelation on all things. 
God is under no compulsion to reveal to us all things. So the secret things belong to the Lord, but those which are revealed belong to us and our children forever, praise God, that we may, that we may do all the words of this law. So God's method of illumination is by revelation. And that's why Ephesians 1, 17 through 19, it's very important we pray that. Okay? We all, I always pray, Lord, enlighten me. Enlighten me. Lord, I just lose the spirit of wisdom and revelation. That, I, that my eyes will be enlightened right now. That I can know what, it, what is the hope of his calling for me. Lord, what do you have for me in, in my life? What do you want me to do, Lord? So you, should, you, you can pray that. Amen? And so we know there's secret things out there. God doesn't have to reveal to us all things. There's many people didn't know, many prophets didn't know about this virus coming. Amen? I just uh, heard one prophetess, uh, she had prophesied it a year ago. Now, that's scriptural because the Lord says that he won't do anything until he reveals it to his servants, the prophets. So some prophet uh, or prophetess on this planet is going to have the revelation. That doesn't mean all of us are going to have it. However, I do believe we'll bear witness with it when we hear it. When I heard her prophesy that, I, I definitely bear witness with it. And, uh, and the Lord had revealed to me some things a few weeks ago about this play. Amen? And uh, I also believe, by the way, uh, that there's going to be another cycle. I don't mean to sound like a doomsday prophet, but that's what I'm getting in my spirit. That uh, this is going to subside. There's going to be like this phase of it. Uh, it's going to subside, but also what I'm getting, there's going to be another cycle. And I know that on the media, they've been kind of talking about that. They're wondering about it. But I have it in my spirit. There's something that, you see, this is demonic. And the devil's trying to take out as many people as he possibly can. And in the process, God's trying to save people and wake them up. Amen? So I believe that there's going to be another cycle of this. And I don't believe it's going to be as bad, but... Uh, I, I, I believe people are still going to have to be careful months from, from now. And uh, so we'll see how that plays out. And all of that can be mitigated by 2 Chronicles 7.14. If my people which are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, God says he'll heal us. Amen. And so it's up to the people of God to intercede. Amen. And we are doing that. Many are fasting and praying and we're believing daily. Amen. Glory to God. So And I invite you to to reach out by faith and keep praying that God stop this plague and save the people. Amen? So I believe that the, the Lord is, uh, is he's intervening even now. They had said there's going to be hundreds of thousands of Americans who are going to die, and uh, it, it hasn't been near that amount of quantity. So I believe that God is God does hear us our prayer. Amen? And he's mitigating this right now. But there are secret things. We don't know for sure when it's going to stop. Amen. Maybe some there. I'm sure there's some prophet who does, you know. But many times we get a sensing. Uh, you know, the Lord is good to kind of, you know, He'll tell us line and line upon line. And somebody uh, will probably get a right on word. Some prophet out out there will. Amen. But it all comes by revelation. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And so it's our job that whatever revelation is coming, we appropriate it by faith. Everything is by faith, okay? The Bible says, be it done unto you according to your faith. So that's why we're always desiring to build our faith. How does faith come, saints? Faith comes by hearing the word of God. Amen? You've got to be in the word of God. Amen? Now, I'll tell you a shortcut. One of my favorite shortcuts. And those from my church who are watching will know what I'm about to say. We can go to Jude 20. Verse 20 says, building yourself up in your most holy faith. Speaking in other tongues. Being in the Spirit. There's something about it. As you speak in tongues, it builds you. So between the Word and speaking in tongues, your faith is going to grow. Amen? And then, of course, all the things that we encounter, you know, in life. God builds our faith. He's always about building our faith. Now, we're going to talk about some of the historic restoration moves of God to establish, because what, what was that scripture meaning about present truth? As I said before, there are certain periods of time when God reveals and illuminates what has always been in his word from the foundation of the world, but he's now enlightening us 
that now we can see it. Now we can appropriate it by faith. So in the 1500s, for example, amen, the Protestant movement brought in the whole revelation of the, of the gift of salvation. God used Martin Luther to reveal uh, restoration truth and to birth uh, the Reformation movement. Now that was in the 1500s. Okay? And, uh, and then... And the Holy Spirit revealed through Romans chapter 1, uh, verse 17, and Ephesians 2, 8, 9, that faith, that all of this produced faith for the appropriation of new birth manifestation. Everything was by faith. Okay? And so that was a fresh revelation uh, during that time. Martin Luther said, all you got to do is repent of your sins. You know? We didn't have to kill a bunch of bulls and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Amen. You know, Jesus died on the cross for us. All we had to do is a, is a, to appropriate this free gift is by opening our mouth and making a confession. And saying, you know, we confess with our heart, or confess with our mouth, excuse me, and believe in our heart. A Amen. And, and ask him to come in and Jesus comes in. And it was just that simple. Amen. Let's, uh, let's take a look at that. Romans 1.17. I'm just getting quickened. Now, for those of you who are new, when I, uh, you have to forgive my terminology. Uh, when I say I'm quickened, it means I got a, a prompt, I got an unction. Uh, okay, Apostle Linda, what does that look like? It means, okay, well, I've been, praise God, uh, I've been flowing with the Spirit for a while. So, by His grace, and by the way, we always say grace. Amen? Amen. We don't ever want to get into a pride trip. Pride goes before a fall. So keep the word I out of it. <laughs> Amen? Amen. So as much as possible. And uh, so we just say, by grace, we've been flowing with the Spirit for a while. Amen. Praise God. He's still teaching me. But I have an unction on the inside. I have a, a sensing. Um, you know, go check it out. And uh, so this time it was in my spirit Sometimes, uh, many times the way God deals with me, I, I get sentences, like a person is talking to me, and it, and it is a person. Amen? It's the Holy Spirit. And so he'll say, do this, do that. Um, other prophets and apostles and ministers, God may deal with them in a different way. Um, the Lord is very personal. Amen? And so as you grow in this, do not worry. You'll know what it's God. Amen? The more time you spend in the Word, the more time you spend in prayer, the more time you spend spend in communion with him, just thinking about him, you'll learn how he talks to you. So be at peace. It's all going to come. Amen. So this is Romans 117. All right. So 17 says, amen. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So it's all about faith. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And uh, let's just go to Ephesians real quick here and check out Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. Amen. Ephesians is one of my favorite books of the Bible. 2, 8, and 9. Here it is. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Boy, I love this. We have to go up to verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy... His mercies are new every morning. But God, who is rich in mercy, he's rich in mercy. Isn't that awesome? Because of his love with which he loved us. You know, that's why he's so gentle with us. I mean, we mess up all the time. And God just loves us. And he just gives us new, fresh mercy every morning. Isn't that awesome? Boy, I'm stuck on that mercy for a while. Thank you, Lord. Amen. All right, where are we? Oh, praise God. Verse 4. Uh, he's rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us. Even when we were dead, we were dead in sin. He made us alive together by Christ. By grace you've been saved. You know, it was nothing we could earn. He just loved us. He just gave it to us. That in the ages to come, there's my word again, the ages to come. Think about that, beloved we got eternity with God. Ages to come. 
he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you were saved through faith and not of yourself. It's a gift of God. It doesn't matter how goody two-shoes we are. You know, there's people out there, you know, you, you talk to them on the street, you tell them about Jesus, and they say, well, I'm a good person. No, you're not. The Bible says that your heart is deceitfully wicked, <laughs> and your righteousness is as filthy rags. That's what the scripture says. As good as we are, as good as we think we are, our righteousness is as filthy rags. We need the shed blood of Jesus to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen? So verse 9 says, It's not of works, lest anyone should boast. And verse 10 says that we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Verse 13 says, But now in Christ Jesus you were once afar off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, and he has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition. Amen. Verse 16, that he might reconcile both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity, enmity and he came and preached peace, who to you were far off and to those who were near. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Boy, we could go on. It's beautiful. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your word. All right. So in the 1500s was the gift of salvation. Martin Luther got the revelation uh, to birth the Reformation movement. And then in the 1600s, we had another move of God. The evangelicals, amen, uh, <laughs> declared that salvation was for whosoever will. And again, the sinner's prayer activated the gift of eternal life. Okay? Then in the 1900s, we had the Pentecostal and the Charismatic Movement. Okay, praise God. Thank you, Jesus, for speaking in tongues. Okay, so there was a Methodist preacher by the name of Charles Parham. He challenged his Bible school students to search the scriptures to determine the consistent biblical evidence for receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit revelation produced faith in their, in their hearts for the appropriation of that gift. Okay, and then it, it took an open revelation of Scripture in Acts chapter 2, uh, verses 1 through 4 and 38, before the appropriation of truth could be manifested. So God, in all of these different moves, was revealing different parts of his Scripture, illuminating Scripture, enlightening our eyes so that we could understand. Amen? Praise God. All right. And then in the 1960, from 60 to 79, there was the charismatic movement, and the, and the revelation that the Holy Spirit could baptize all of us and activate and release the gift of tongues anytime. <laughs> Amen. It was for everybody. The baptism of the Holy Spirit was for whosoever will. But that revelation came in the 1960 through 79 time frame. It didn't come right away in 1500. It came sometime later. Okay. Amen. And so again, there had to be an application of faith that was applied to that. All right. Then in the 1980s, amen, we have the prophetic movement, what we're calling the prophetic movement and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So now the Holy Spirit was, was teaching us about 1 Corinthians 12. So let's take a look at 1 Corinthians 12. Amen. General Electric Power Company. You all know that. Lost my tabs here. A quick way that we, we teach the youngsters as well as our oldsters. Amen. General Electric Power Company is in Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians. Amen. And so there's little ways to, to remember all of where all the books of the of the Bible are. Amen. And I was just in, in Ephesians again. Amen. But I'm going back now to uh, 1 Corinthians. And we're in verse, uh, excuse me, we're in chapter 12. Let's see if I even tab this. 
All right, yes I did. around tonight. Okay. All right. Thank you, Lord. Um, start in verse one. This is all good. I'll be done on time. 835. Okay. We'll try not to make this too long request tonight, but it's so good. Praise God. All right. First Corinthians chapter 12. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren. Okay. So now we're talking about the gifts of the spirit and, uh, and this is in Corinthians, right? Amen. So, this is where the apostle is talking to the Corinthian church. And he's telling them, look, I don't want you guys to be ignorant of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So let me do some teaching here. You know that you were Gentiles, verse 2, carried away to these dumb idols. He calls them dumb idols. However you were led, therefore I make known to you, that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit, meaning it's the Holy Spirit who, who brings about the diversity of gifts. There are differences of minister, ministries, but the same Lord. Okay, it's the Lord Jesus who brings about ministries. There are diversities of activities or operations. Some of the other translations calls them operations. There's the way that gifts can operate. Okay? There's diversity in the way that gifts operate. There's a uh, diversity of, of gifts themselves. There's diversities of the way they're administrated. Okay? And ministries. You know, God, God will mix and match. He might give you ten gifts or one gift. He can give as many as he wants. You're not limited to one gift. In fact, that's not even in the character of God. God says, I, I have come that you might have life and more abundantly. Everything about God is abundance. Amen? God doesn't just add, okay? He multiplies. All right? God always multiplies. He always says, I'm going to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you have ask or think. You know, and I can think of a lot of nice things. I don't know about you. But God says, I will, I will give you exceeding abundance above that. So in the totality of God's word, you always see the abundance with God. So it's the same way with the gifts of spirit. He's not just going to give you one. He's going to give you several. Amen? Because that's just in his nature. He's an abundant God. And he loves us. Praise God. Amen? So there are diversities of the way that the Spirit operates through people. And so I just want to say that up front, it's very important that you understand that because the, the way he flows through me may be different than the way he flows through you. Amen? I can give you examples of the elders in our church, for example. They're all mantled. Amen? And God flows through all of us a little bit differently. But it's the same Holy Spirit and it's the same God. And that's why I, I always make the analogy, you have to dance with your dancing partner. Amen? You have to learn to flow with the Holy Spirit. And the way you do that is by reading the Word, desiring the gifts, spending time with Him. If you speak in tongues, speak in tongues more. You always want to speak in tongues as much as you can. Why? Because when you speak in tongues, the Holy Spirit intercedes for you according to the perfect will of God. Well, let's think about that. What's the perfect will of God? The perfect will of God is that you're transformed into the image of Christ. The perfect will of God is that you have joy unspeakable and full of glory. The perfect will of God is that you're healed, you're saved, you're fulfilled in Christ, you're walking in your calling, you're fulfilling your destiny. Amen? You have happy marriages, you have blessed children, you have health and prosperity. That's the perfect will of God. So the more you speak in tongues, the more the Holy Spirit is interceding for you according to the perfect will of God, to bring the perfect will of God about in your life. I can never understand why people don't want to speak in tongues. It brings about the perfect will of God. It's a shortcut. In English, in our, in our human language, we don't know how to pray. The scripture even says, when you don't know how to pray, speak in the Spirit. 
Amen? I even tell my ministers, you should at least be speaking in tongues 15 minutes a day. Minimum. Bishop Hammond does one hour in the morning every day. No wonder he's such a powerhouse. He's 85, amen, and he can, he can walk faster than I can. Amen? <laughs> Glory to God. What a great example. Amen? We ought to follow his pattern. He speaks in tongues one hour a day. Boy, I'll tell you what, when, uh, when our apostle comes in, your apostle Leon, and, 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 and he stays in our house with us, he's in tongues all the time. He follows that example. Amen? And he's in his 70s, and these guys, they travel around the world. Amen? And they're prophesying over thousands. God does miracles for them all the time. And they're blessed, and they're prosperous. That's the example to follow. Speak in tongues, people. Amen. Verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. So there's going to be a manifestation of the Spirit. God promises you that in verse 7. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. Okay, so there's, there's one gift, the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge. Verse 9, to another, faith. That's the gift of faith. That's not saving faith. That's the gift of faith. The gift of faith is a whole level more. Amen? I personally believe the gift of faith is in operation with the gift of miracles. Because you have to have faith for miracles. So faith by the same Spirit to another gifts of healings. Notice that word is plural. Okay? There's what we call inner healing. You know, if you've been hurt on the inside, somebody betrayed you, somebody abused you, somebody did something wrong, they backstabbed you, you got to be healed on the inside. Okay? Then there's physical healing. There's inner healing. There's physical healing. Maybe you broke a bone, and, and you need a physical healing, okay? So there's different types of healings. To another, the working of miracles, verse 10. To another, prophecy. Now, that's called the gift of prophecy. There's a difference between the spirit of prophecy and the gift of prophecy and the gift of prophecy that operates through an apostle or prophet, okay? To another, different kinds of tongues. So you can have tongues with interpretation. Okay? That tongue is different than the tongue that you're baptized with. The tongue that you're baptized with, you're baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking of other tongues. That's your personal communication language with the Holy Spirit. That's personal. This is another type. This is a gift of tongues. It's a different tongue. And when you operate in this gift, you'll even hear it, that it's a different lingo. And to another, the interpretation of that tongue. Now, we always say the gift of prophecy is a shortcut, because when you have tongues with interpretation, that's, that's really like the, the gift of prophecy. Amen? It's not the same thing, though. Amen. Verse 11 says, But one in the same spirit works all these things. It's the same Holy Spirit. Amen? And he distributes to each one individually as he will. So this whole laundry list of gifts in 1 Corinthians 12, it's up to the Holy Spirit and, and to deliver it to you. It, it says right here, it's the same Spirit distributing to each one individually what? As he wills, not as we will. Now, praise God. We can believe God for promotion. Promotion doesn't come from the east or from the west. It comes from the Lord. And the Bible says to seek spiritual gifts. Amen? Seek them. And I'm going to show you that in Scripture. Okay? Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Uh, before we leave 12... Praise God. I want you to drop down into verse uh, 27. Now, we are the body of Christ, but members individually. And God has appointed these in the church. Check his list out. You have apostles, prophets.
prophets, teachers, after that miracles, gifts of healings, helps, administrations, and varieties of tongues. Now notice verse 29. It says, is everybody an apostle? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak with the gift of tongues? And verse 31 says, but earnestly desire the best gifts. And yet I show you a more excellent way. So we are mandated to earnestly desire the best gifts. And then he goes on and he tells you what's one of the best gifts, and that's love, in, verse, in chapter 13. Right in the middle of all of this laundry list of gifts of the Spirit, he talks about love. Okay? And that's because no matter how gifted we are, we have to operate with the love of Jesus. And so he goes into the whole love section. Then look at uh, chapter 14. Chapter 14, verse 1, says what? Pursue love and desire gifts. So that's our mandate. That's how we do it. We pursue love, loving the brethren, and desire spiritual gifts. And he says, but especially that you may prophesy. So I would claim 14.1. If you want to be used in the gifts of the Spirit, Claim chapter 14, verse 1. And I can tell you, my husband and I, when we got started on this over 25 years ago, we would fast and pray for the gifts of the Spirit. Because he says, earnestly desire them. Amen? But especially that you may prophesy. So we would, we would fast three to five days at a time. And we say, Lord, create in us a clear heart. Whatever we need, Lord, we want these gifts of the Holy Spirit. Lord, anoint us in Jesus' name. We want to be used for your glory. You called us to ministry, Lord. You called us to pastor. You called us to raise and train. Lord, anoint us. And then we'd go see the prophetic people and we'd have them lay hands on us. Because there's transference. There's lay, by laying on of hands, they can stir you up. And we're going to stir you up tonight. Amen. Through all of these classes, we're going to stir you up. And there's no time or distance in the Spirit. So we're going to release the anointing and you're going to believe to receive. Because everything is by faith. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Alrighty, praise God. And then very quickly, you can see I'm running out of time here pretty soon. Uh, 1990, in the 1990s was the apostolic movement. Okay? God was revealing, so backing up a minute, the Lord was revealing the restoration of the offices of, of, the, of, the, of the fivefold of the Holy Spirit. Okay, let's just uh, look at Ephesians real quick because i got to show you that scripture. Okay, let's go to Ephesians 4.11. So what we just talked about was the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which the Holy Spirit gives. Now, let's look at Ephesians 4.11. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Let's go to verse 7. To each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and he gave gifts to men. Who was giving the gifts to men? This is Jesus. It says, according to the measure of Christ's gift. Now he ascended. What does it mean but that he also uh, first descended into the lower parts of the earth? Okay, it's talking about Jesus now. He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. And he himself, look at verse 11. He himself, who is he? Jesus Christ. Let's talk about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ gave some to be apostles, some to prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and teachers. What for? Verse 12 tells us. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, 
for the edifying of the body of Christ. Why? Until we all come to the unity of the faith and to the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we're no longer children tossed to and fro. Amen? But speaking the truth in love, verse 15, we may grow up in all things unto him who is the head Christ. So, praise God, who is the head Christ Jesus. Excuse me. Amen? So Jesus Christ is the one who calls people, this is what we call the fivefold, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. Those are the fivefold ministry offices. Amen? They're the generals in God's kingdom, you might say. Amen? They are the ones that are called to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ in verse 12. And so through all of this restoration, all right, Jesus was restoring the fivefold office. We always knew about evangelists. We always heard about pastors. We even knew something about teachers. But we didn't hear a whole lot about a prophets, prophets and apostles. Amen? And then in the 1980s, all of a sudden, was the prophetic movement and prophets were being restored to the office. And they always were there. We just didn't realize it. God has always had prophets, from Genesis to Revelation. Praise God. Uh, Adam is a prophet, was a prophet. Read the Bible. You'll, you'll see they're, from, they're prophets all the way through. Praise God. And so all of those offices are to equip the saints. Now in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, those are the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives those gifts. Jesus calls you to the office. Okay, does everybody see that? Amen? Thank you, Lord. And 1 Corinthians 12, 7 also says, the, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit everybody. Because it's a body ministry. Amen? So the Holy Spirit gives gifts to everybody. But Jesus right, shows us not everybody is called to the fivefold. Okay? It's his business who's called. And if you want to be called, you ask him. Amen? He does promote. Glory to God. All right. So the apostolic movement came in in the 1990s where God was restoring the office of the apostle. Now, we always get questions. Okay? The 12 apostles of the Lamb, that's set. They're there. That's it. Okay? We're talking about modern-day prophets and, uh, and apostles. We're not talking about the original 12 dis disciples. Okay? Modern-day apostle today, okay, the Bible says they're going to move in signs, miracles, and wonders. If, you know, there's certain uh, gift sets that go with apostles and prophets, pastors, teachers, and so on. And by the way, no one is above the other. Okay? It doesn't mean... You know, yeah. If I, if I'm a pastor, and that's my main calling. I'm I'm every bit as important as an apostle, as a prophet, and saints. You're every bit as important too. Amen. God, Jesus died for all of us. Amen. The, the the scripture says, "The first shall be last, and the last first. Doesn't mean that anybody is above anybody else. It just means your function is different, your calling is different, and there's a different accountability. And responsibility that God gives you. Okay? I was called first as an, as an apostle way back. And then when Christian or, uh, International ordained me, they ordained me as a prophetess. They recognized me as a prophetess. Okay? Then a, <laughs> then a couple years ago, all right, they installed me as an apostle. And in fact, an apostle over Covenant Life Church. Amen? Now my husband and I, we work together as a team. Amen. We're an apostolic prophetic team. We're actually the fivefold. There's, I have, there are prophecies over our life. We're called to all five of the offices. Now it's up to the it's up to the Lord, what what He wants to do. Amen. But I'll tell you what, saints, to whom much is given, much is required. And and if He calls you, and you raise your hand and you sign up for His army. Amen. What does the Bible say about vows? 
Don't, don't say a vow lightly. Praise God. Because God's going to take you at, at his word, at, at your word. And he's going to raise and train you. Amen? And to whom much is given, much is re required. Praise God. But I'll tell you what, Saint. It's worth it, man. Don't ever turn down God. Then the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. And boy, when that anointing comes on you, and you start moving in the gifts of spirit, and you see how God is using you to bless people, it's just going to give you a warm and fuzzy. And you're walking in your calling. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. Serve the Lord. Amen. With joy. Amen. Serve the Lord with gladness. The scripture says. Amen. There's nothing like being, being uh, uh, called by God and serving God. There's nothing like it. Amen. And just think you'll be rewarded not only in this earth, but you'll be rewarded eternally. Amen. Praise God. We're almost done here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So there's a, there's a pattern that if you look at these various movements, you'll see there's a pattern for bringing forth the revelation. Uh, first, uh, God, he brings forth sovereign revelation by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit enlightens our eyes. And he, and he begins to move on mankind and say, look, what about this? I'm teaching you something. And then there are principles of faith that are used for procuring and producing all this truth. Our faith has to arise to grasp it. Amen. And so usually... Uh, God will begin dealing with a man or a woman uh, uh, about a truth. And then there will also be a, mo a means of, of producing that truth, of, or rather spreading it. Okay, for example, the printing of the Bible, spread the truth. All of our recent communication and technology, this media, Facebook, there's a means of, of spreading truth. Amen. So God provides that. Amen. Thank you, Lord. All right. Uh, we already talked about the fivefold. Okay, these are the headship gifts in, in Ephesians 4, 11. And uh, it takes time for God to grow people. Amen? And so, uh, you know, amen. And there's a process. There's what we call a prophetic process. Because remember, foundationally, what is the, what's the mission of the Holy Spirit? To transform us into the image of Christ. It doesn't matter what your calling is. We are all being transformed. And so there's a process uh, for that. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Okay, I had a question here. Have apostles experienced the risen Christ? Or is that the office of the apostle? Okay, I'm not really sure what that question means. Uh, let me say it like, like this. The office of the apostle, amen, in, in modern day, right now, in present truth, that office, as you read in the scripture, the scripture says that apostles will move, and, and the sign of an apostle is in, is in uh, signs, miracles, and wonders. And when you're called to any of these offices, whether it's pastor, teacher, evangelist, prophet, or apostle, we in Christian International use what's called a presbytery. There are other mantles, mantled apostles and prophets who will gather around you, and they lay hands on you, and they minister to you, and the Lord reveals what office that you're called to. Okay? And so everybody, obviously, is saved. Okay? Now, I will say this. God, I, I prophesied over people that were not saved and they were called to an office and they ended up getting saved right during the prophecy. Amen? So G God can do anything he wants to. He'll let unsaved people know what they're called to be and they can choose or not choose. But if we accept the office, then we're accepting Jesus and we accept the risen Christ. So if that's what that question means. So I, I hope that I answered that, that question. Amen? All right. Praise God. And we're going to jump down here. All right. Thank you, Lord. Now, so I'm going to talk about how do we activate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I'm, I'm going to uh, end this teaching uh, with that information. 
think about how you got saved. How did you, how did you how did you get saved? All right, you had to open your mouth and you had to confess the Lord Jesus and you had to believe in your heart that that Jesus was uh died for you. Amen. And that he was going to save you. You had to repent of your sins. Right? We started out this whole teaching tonight with, with a salvation prayer. So let's go through the prayer a minute. All right? So if you're not saved out there tonight, I'm going to ask you to follow me in, in this prayer. I'm going to say, Lord Jesus Christ, come into my heart and forgive me my sins. I want to live for you from this moment on. In Jesus name now what happened in that prayer I had to open my mouth and speak the words I could not just think it I had to confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus that's what the scripture says we got to confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and we believe in our heart amen and so it's that's how we how, that's how we activate all the gifts of the Spirit it's the same principle Okay, so so we got to confess it. We say, Lord, activate me. Lord, by faith, I, I accept the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I stir myself up in whatever gift, Lord, that you have for me. And that's where the prophets and apostles come in and those with the gift of prophecy. Amen. Because they will prophesy to you and they, the Holy Spirit will reveal what gifts he's imparting to you. Now, I want to encourage you tonight, just because he reveals one or two gifts tonight, doesn't mean there's many more, there's not many more coming, okay? God takes us line upon line, and so he reveals a little bit at a time. Very rarely is he going to lay it all out to you in one shot. So tonight he might say you're called to the gift of faith, two days from now he may, he may add to it. You're called to the gift of working of miracles, you're called to be an apostle, called to be a prophet, whatever. Amen? God reveals as he wants to. Amen? But all the gifts of the Spirit are activated in the same way. They all have to be appropriated by faith. I didn't get that. We, all, we all have to, excuse me, Siri was talking to me. She, she wants the Holy Spirit. Amen? <laughs> Amen? They're all activated in the same way. Okay? We got to confess Jesus. We got to believe to receive, and we appropriate it by faith, okay? Now, there's other tips that are uh, along the pathway that we're going to teach you as we are uh, training all over the, the next uh, 10 classes. Amen? Praise God. And we got some more uh, questions here. Is there a difference between being called to an office and having a particular gift? Yes, most definitely, okay? Ephesians 4.11 are the offices, Okay, the gifts are in 1 Corinthians 12. Now, we know from study of the scripture that when you're called to an office, there are gifts that are automatically given with that office. Okay, they enable you to function in that ministry office. Okay, now again, God can mix and match any way he wants to. All right. So, uh, let's, I'll take myself as an example. All right, Christian International, uh, they ordained me as a prophetess first. Uh, even though I was called as an apostle by another ministry, when I came into Christian International, their revelation at that time was that I was uh, ordained as a prophetess. And um, uh, so when they lay hands on me, Okay, in the office of the prophet, we know are the revelation gifts. The gift of prophecy, the gift of prophecy that's mentioned in 1 Corinthians 12. Okay, the gift of prophecy is one of the base foundational gifts for all prophets. Okay, if you're a prophet, you operate in the gift of prophecy. Amen. It's like, do fish swim? You know, <laughs> amen. It's a basic gift. It's a foundational gift. Prophets operate in revelation. So uh, the word of wisdom, okay, the word of knowledge are, are revelational gifts. So the revelational gifts are in what I call the kit bag 
of gifts that, that the prophet has. Those are base foundational gifts. Um, many, many times, uh, uh, many prophets will operate in all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, I haven't run across too many prophets that don't. Okay, and prophets usually do. And by the way, apostles normally do too. Um, the other offices, pastor, evangelist, teacher, there's other gifts in 1 Corinthians 12 that go with them. Uh, but it's up to the Holy Spirit uh, to give them as he wills. And once again, you can ask for the gifts too. You know, he said, that's why we read uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 1. Desire spiritual gifts. Amen? All right, so I hope I answered that. Um, thank you, Lord. Apostles, uh, the scripture says that the sign of an apostle is signs, miracles, and wonders. So obviously the gift of working of miracles is inherent in the office of the apostle. So when I was ordained an uh, apostle, okay, so now I'm ordained as a prophet and apostle. I'm God is adding more gifts to my gift set. Okay? Now I believe that I was already operating in a measure of miracles under the gift, under the office of the prophetess. But now there's an enhancement, you might say. I got an upgrade, praise God. Amen. I'm at 2.0. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I'll take it all, Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name, whatever God wants to give me. By grace. So there was an enhancement when I was ordained as an apostle because there was a gift set that inherently went with that gift, with that office. Does that make sense? Amen? You know, if uh, my pastor here, uh, she's, very, she's a gifted teacher. She has a, a, a teaching gift. Okay, Pastor Andrea, who's in the chat right now, uh, and in fact, she's called to the fivefold. Uh, but those offices have not all manifested yet. See, it takes time to grow all of us. I mean, this is, man, we're a work in progress, you know. And uh, it, it, it doesn't mean that we're uh, uh, not, you know, fit the fight, that we're not a good person. It's that God has a timeline and a process for us. Amen? And it, it, it's, it, that's why we call it the school of the Holy Spirit. We're in the school, all of us are in the school of the Holy Spirit. And... He takes us line upon line, as he wills in his timeline. And so, uh, Pastor Andrea, okay, so she's called to the fivefold, but right now, she's ordained as a pastor. She's functioning in the office of the pastor. Okay, what do we know about pastors? They're shepherds. Her and her husband are great shepherds. You know, <laughs> Now, I'm gonna tell you, I have not been ordained as a pastor. I function as a pastor. I'm ordained as a prophetess and an apostle. And when you get me and Pastor Andrea and Sean together, you can see she's a pastor and I'm an apostle prophet. And uh, it's kind of hard. There's a lot to explain in that. Uh, but she's a wonderful pastor. Uh, the other day, let me give you an example. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rat on you, Pastor. Okay. So, Pastor Andrea, all this virus stuff is coming around. And, and you know, I, I'm calling her up saying, you know, how, how's your food pantry look? I'm, I'm looking out for my pastor here. You know, and, she, and she's worried about everybody else. She's telling me, well, I got to help this one. I got to help one. I said, Pastor Andrea, do you have food for your child? <laughs> Amen. And I love her heart. You know. She was looking around at everybody else, not even concerned about her own food pantry. You know? But the apostle in me and the prophet in me said, okay, wait a minute. we got to take care of our home first, you know, so that we, then we can take care of everybody else. Amen? And so she giggled. She laughed. We had a good laugh about it. I understood. You know? And I was glad she had a heart for the people. Praise God. That's wonderful. We all got to show love and a heart for the people. And her first concern, she's a shepherd. She was looking for everybody else. Amen. Isn't that awesome? See, that that's the shepherd's heart. You know, to gather the sheep up. She's always gathering everybody up. You know? And uh, praise God, I love that. 
that's that office. Amen? Amen. Uh, for the apostolic, and me as an apostle, God gives me vision for the organization. I'm, I'm thinking always usually about the organization and how I can grow the organization. No, it doesn't mean I don't love people. Of course I love people. Christ in us, the hope of glory. If you got Christ in you, you love people. Amen? I mean, you know, uh, we're pouring out our life for people. I'm not getting paid a million dollars for this. You know, we're doing it because we love God. We love people. We want to minister. Okay? But the office that I stand in has a certain gift set. Uh, going back, back to Pastor Andrea, she's a wonderful teacher. She has a teaching gift. And, and she was a principal in a school. Amen? And so she was a shepherd even as a principal. When you think about it, it was a perfect function for her. She's gathering up all the children. She loves all these children. She's, she's a great shepherd. And her husband is a great shepherd. Praise God, Pastor Sean. He'll sit down and, and talk for hours about stuff with people. And sometimes I get wore out. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. But no, I love to prophesy. Okay, because I'm a prophet too. So I'll prophesy as long as God gives me energy. Amen. I'll go outside and prophesy to the trees, to the rocks. My husband, he busts my chops all the time. He says, you know, how many are you going to prophesy to tonight? Because I love to prophesy. Because that's part of my gift set. Okay, so I hope that some of this is making sense. Amen. Uh, if you have a teaching gift, does that mean you're called to that office? Not necessarily. Okay. Not necessarily. You could be, but not necessarily. Now, on the other hand, uh, it may be easy for you to move into that office. Okay? Uh, so what you need to do is get around the prophets and apostles and let them lay hands on you and prophesy to you and find out what you're called to. Okay? And remember, if you love it so much, you can ask for it. You know, listen. The scripture says, ask and you shall receive. You can ask for anything. It doesn't mean you're going to get it, but you can ask for it. You can keep bugging God for it. Amen? Praise God. Keep knocking. Keep asking. All right? Uh, some have said that in order to be an apostle, you have to have a vision of Jesus. Like the original apostles. Is that true? No, it's not. Uh, find me a scripture that says that. Okay? Go back to the word of God. You know, I've been ordained as apostle. Okay, um, the Lord just, I just had an encounter. Um, I would say, okay, I'm 58 years old. I was saved at the age of seven. So I've been walking with the Lord by his grace for 51 years. I just had an encounter with Jesus on August 19th of... Uh, 2019 last year and uh, praise God it was awesome it, and he came in the form of a dream and the whole trinity showed up praise God I was um, I, I have a PhD in counseling but I went back because uh, I've never gotten a master in divinity and I wanted to do that for the fun of it you know and uh, so the Lord allowed me to do it. And I was studying the Trinity at great length. And right in that time frame. And so the Lord gave me a dream. And you know, I, and, I, and I was talking to him, I said, Lord, all these other people to this point here, they, they say they've had visions and dreams of you and everything else, and I've never seen you. <laughs> when? And I was bugging God about it, you know? So he showed up in a dream. No, there isn't a scripture that says that. Amen? Go back to the word of God. Amen? You know, the Lord can do anything he wants to. He can call you to anything he wants to. Amen? I mean, just think about that. A few minutes ago I was saying how he even called somebody who wasn't saved. I was so shocked one time. Uh, uh, we, were pro we were prophesying right in our church. Excuse me a minute. And, um, pardon me. 
And here was a man. He was standing right in front of me. I was prophesying to him, and he wasn't saved. And I, boy, that's where God, he broke my theology. You know, God can speak to anybody. But think about it. We all got saved. How did we get saved? We were unsaved, and the Holy Spirit drew us. And we heard the voice. Amen? A pilot's wife wasn't saved, and God gave her a dream. God is God. He can do anything he wants. Amen. All right, uh, when the fivefold officers die, their mantles are left in the earth. Can mantles be claimed by anybody? Okay, so I would like to see a scripture that says that their mantles are left in the earth. I don't know of a scripture that says that. So uh, whoever wrote that question... Go ahead and chat in. Where, where is that scripture? I don't re recall that. Um, now we know that Elisha and Elijah, Elijah uh, told, you know, Elisha, that if you're here when I go, you're going to get the double portion. Amen? Amen. Uh, but that doesn't mean that all mantles are left in the earth. So uh, I would like to see that scripture. I am not familiar with that scripture. Um, can a mantle be claimed by anybody? No. <laughs> uh, we just read the scripture in, in Ephesians 4.11. Okay, this is why we read it here. In verse 11 it says, And he himself, Jesus gives some to be apostles. Okay? You just don't walk up and claim a mantle. You have to go to the Lord and say, Lord, I would like to function in that office. And then if he desires you to function in that office, he'll call you to it. Okay? And that's why I prefaced all this by saying, promotion comes from the Lord. It doesn't come from man. Promotion doesn't come from the east or from the west. It comes from the Lord. Okay? What is an example of a wonder? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I you know, I have wondered that myself my whole life. I bug God all the time on what's a wonder. Amen? Um, so I, I will tell you what I believe. Because, you know, it's really hard. You, you need a revelation by... by uh, you need the Holy Spirit to reveal to you. But a wonder to me is parting of the Red Sea. And you could also say that's a miracle. Amen. That's a gift of, of, of working of, of miracles. But um, a wonder to me is something extraordinary. Um, you know, something that's like very impossible. Um, maybe... Um, Aaron's rod, you know how it was budding, right? And there were buds on it. Uh, you know, the, the staff had buds on it. I would call that a wonder. Something that is just truly supernatural. Okay? And that's just my, my punt. I'm, I'm still studying that too. Can married couples offices flow into each other boy we got some good questions here tonight yes i do believe that and i'll tell you why the scripture says that when you get married the two shall be one and i will tell you from my own personal experience uh so what happened with my my husband and i when we came into christian international and the presbytery laid hands on us the revelation at that time was i was an, a, a prophetess and my husband was the apostle. And we noticed that when we, um, when we minister together jointly, uh, those of you who understand an apostle and a prophetess, you will recognize the gift set on us. Uh, is that a fair statement, Pastor Andrea? Can you give me a no or a yes? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Uh, so my husband as an apostle, he also has a teaching gift. And uh, so we call him, he's an apostolic teacher. 
And um, uh, lately especially, miracles have been coming up in him. The gift of working, oh, thank you. The gift of working of miracles. Remember I said the sign of an apostle is signs, miracles, and wonders. And Apostle Jeff, I, I will tell you, over the course of our ministry, he has seen more miracles when he lays hands on people. I don't want to say that I have, but that's my kind of, you know, I want to be careful about that. Uh, but, but I know that God uses him in miracles. Okay? Now, with me, the prophetic uh, is, is very fluent by God's grace. Um, and some would say, and I want to be careful about this too, that some would say um, that I'm more fluent in the prophetic gift than my husband. Uh, we want to be careful about that, okay? So when we, when we minister together, you can see a difference. Um, if you look at our Facebook, okay, on Sunday, Apostle Jeff was giving the Resurrection Day sermon. Uh, he has a very strong teaching gift. And um, and apostles are foundational. And my husband is very foundational. Uh, he has a real gift, a knack, an anointing uh, to raise and train babies. He loved it when we, got, when we went into this dis discipleship stuff. He loves it because he wants to raise the babies because that's foundational. Okay? Um, and so, you know, you can really see the gift come out, okay? Uh, me, as a, as a prophetess, my primary gift was prophetess. I love to prophesy all day long, okay? And so, you know, I'll go as long as God gives me energy for that, okay? Amen. And uh, so, now, when I'm by myself, I've also noticed the apostolic and prophetic flow together. Okay? Um, I've seen more miracles recently uh, in, in my own life that anointing is coming up. Of course, I do believe that I am ordained now as an apostle. So it's part of my gift set. Um, but when I operate alone, when he's not here, uh, sometimes I go out of ministry commitments by myself or... Uh, we're, we're ministering in, in, in the church separately for whatever reason. Uh, I've noticed that, yes, his anointing is flowing on me. Uh, tonight, um, I, would, I think it's fair to say I've been teaching. And uh, I sense the teaching gift more tonight. Normally, when I'm in church behind the pulpit, I'm more of a preacher. But tonight, I'm sensing the teaching gift coming out. In fact... Uh, this is one of the first times, I don't know, Pastor Andre, I'm going to have to dialogue with you later. You've seen me over the course of 15 years. I sense the real teaching gift uh, coming up tonight. Okay? And, uh, and um, I sense that coming from my husband. Although I do have a teaching gift too. But his is very strong. So that enables me. And as a wife, uh, I, you know, spiritually, whether you're a husband or wife, you, you claim that. I always say, Lord, the two shall be one. So, Father, flow the gift into me. In Jesus' name, and flow my gift into him. Praise God. Um, amen. So, in answer to that question, bottom line is, yeah. The, the, and that's scriptural, because the two shall be one. So, if they're one, everything's going to flow together. Okay? Amen. God stirs... Alice, by unction to pray in the tongues, uh, God has not revealed to me if I'm called to an office. Should we pray for God to promote her? Okay, yeah. Amen. We can we can believe God and pray for anybody to, to be promoted and ask the Lord to reveal to them what, what their calling is. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Praise the Lord. Do we have any other questions, Pastor Andrea? Alibi Fires over there. Amen. Praise God. Can you be called to an office without being in full-time ministry? That's another very good question. There is not a scripture 
that says if you're called to an office, you must be in full-time ministry. I don't know of any scripture that says that. However, we have noted that if you are called to an office, you probably are in full-time ministry. But you don't have to be. Because, again, there isn't a scripture that says you have to be. You remember? You have to go back to the Word. But what's the purpose of the fivefold? The purpose of the fivefold is to equip the saints. Now, um, let me say this. There are apostles who are called to the marketplace. There are, uh, you know, they have apostles. All the fivefold can be in different places. And God doesn't always call you to the pulpit, per se. Okay? So there are apostles who are ordained apostles, and they're the head of corporations. And that's part of their ministry. Okay? You don't have to be called to the pulpit. Not all ministers are called to the pulpit. Not all ministers are called to function. I'm an apostle prophetess, but I'm called to function as a pastor. So sometimes people call me Pastor Linda, which is fine. Okay? And so uh, just to let you know about that, you can function. You can be called, you can be an evangelist and be called to function as a pastor. Evangelist Jimmy Swaggart comes to mind. Okay? Yet they have a church. So evangelist Jimmy Swaggart was called to pastor also. He functions as a pastor. And I'm, I'm sure he gives pastoral counseling. Amen? But his primary call might be evangelist. Okay? Uh, so, having said that, you can be in full-time ministry outside of the church. And there are many who are. Okay? Um, so, it depends on what you mean by full-time ministry. If you mean full-time pulpit, that's different from full-time marketplace. Now, I personally believe, again, if you're called to one of the fivefold, that's God's generals, you're called to equip the saints, so you're leading. So you'll probably even be in full-time ministry somewhere, either it's behind the pulpit or in a corporation, in the marketplace, somewhere, but you're always ministering in some kind of format. Okay? Amen. All righty. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So we're going to uh, end the teaching for tonight right there. Went a little longer than I thought, but that's okay. We're, we're glad you're enjoying it. Amen. So, Father, we just seal the word right now in Jesus' name. And we thank you. We charge the people. Father, uh, Lord, I just hear uh, Ephesians 1.18 coming up. Father, enlighten them. Lord, enlighten them. Let the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. And we release right now an enlightening in the name of Jesus. Stir them in the prophetic and the apostolic right now. Yes, God, that they will receive revelation. Everybody out there, put your hand on your ears. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just release a supernatural hearing. Bring them up through another level, Lord God. In Jesus' name, that they will hear with spiritual hearing. Okay, everybody, put your, put your fingers on your eyes. Touch your eyes. Father, in the name of Jesus, enlighten their eyes, Father. Let the eyes of their understanding be enlightened. Father, give them eyes to hear, eyes to see, in the name of Jesus. Ears to hear. Amen. In Jesus' name. Now, put your hand on your mouth. Lord, let them speak the words of God. Stir them up in the prophetic, that they release, amen, the prophetic word, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we just anoint them right now in Jesus' name. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So we seal the word on them right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Um, Pastor Andrea, I'm, I'm hearing the Lord say... Uh, no prophetic word right now tonight uh, in individual prophetic words, but he just wants me to re release corporate, uh, uh, you know, anointing. 
and uh, you had there were a couple prayer requests. We will we will do that. Okay, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I just heard the Lord say the hour is getting late. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. But we want to invite you. Uh, we normally uh, in the discipleship course. Uh, we've not always been prophesying each class. It's more of an instructional class, but this is the prophetic. So we'll be stirring you up. Amen. And there will be some prophesying. Okay. Um, so for whatever reason, the Lord is doing like, like this tonight, but, uh, I'm still gonna, I'm still gonna pray for you. And I heard him say, release a corporate word. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So father, in the name of Jesus, father, we just thank you. For the Lord would say, surely, now here's a corporate word. This is for everybody. For the Lord would say, thank you, Jesus. Let me get this on tape. Thank you, Lord. Praise God, praise God, praise God. For the Lord would say, surely, amen. The Lord says, I love you, says the Lord. And I'm stirring you up tonight, says God. Stir up in your most holy faith, says the Lord. Pursue me, pursue me, pursue me, says God. For the hour is nearing of my return, says the Lord. And my desire, says God, even as the word says, I'm pouring out my spirit on all flesh. And I desire to pour out to you the more, says the Lord. And so says God, seek me with a whole heart, says the Lord. Turn away from your sin. Turn away from your materialism. Turn away from your selfishness, says God. And put on Christ. Put me on, says God. Put me on, says the Lord. And stir yourself up, says God. And draw near to me with a pure heart, says the Lord. And the Lord says, I'm going to cleanse you. And I'm going to make you whole. And I'm going to anoint you, says God. For I love you, says the Lord. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I, I charge them right now with that word in Jesus' name. And we release comfort and peace on them right now. And strength in the inner man in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Okay. Uh, so this prayer, amen, is a prayer request for Ruby Hall and the, uh, the Hall in the Hill family. So, Father, we just thank you right now. Amen for the uh, Ruby Hall family. And uh, Lord, we just thank you for them. And Lord, we just bless them in the name of Jesus. And I do hear a word coming, so I'll, I'll be obedient to that. And, uh, and the Lord says, uh, Son and daughter, I've blessed you with a great blessing, says God. And the Lord says, I'm for you and not against you. And the enemy has come down into the family to seek whom he may destroy. And God says that I am holding off that destructive spirit for your sake, says the Lord. Even as the word says, when Satan came before and he said, I want to sift him as wheat. And the Lord says, I'm interceding for you. The Lord says that I have stayed my hand against the enemy. And God says that I have brought you up out of the pit and out of the, more, out of the miry clay. And God says, I'm doing a new work in this whole family, says God. And I sense that there's even healing going on right now. In the name of Jesus, we release healing, even inner healing. There's been trauma, there's been hurt, there's grief and sorrow, and Lord, I rebuke that in Jesus' name, and I command those demon spirits out of those people right now, and I command a healing on the whole family, and Lord, stir them, and there are prophetic people in that family, and the Lord says that I have offices that I've called, you, uh, called some of you to, says the Lord, and the Lord says, I'm drawing you out in this season into greater ministry, says God, and I'm even, uh, I'm even causing a healing to come on the inside and the outside. And the Lord says, I am going to draw you out into ministry into this season. So the Lord says, forgive one another, says God. Amen. Forgive those and pray for those who, who despitefully, despitefully use you. And the Lord says, I know that I'm healing you in this hour. And I love you with a great love. And I'm for you and not against you. So Father, we release that to the family right now. In Jesus' name. And there's a spirit of debt. Uh, a devouring spirit and spirit of debt that's been working against your finances and I break the power of that right now in Jesus name and I command that debt and that devouring spirit to go right now in the name of Jesus and I lose prosperity I lose blessing 
And I lose the favor of the Lord right now in Jesus' name. And I seal it. And I charge the whole family with it right now in Jesus' name. And there's some people who are not saved in this family. Father, we call them to repentance. Bring them to repentance right now. I send the, I release the Holy Spirit, the convicting power of the Holy Spirit right down in that family right now in Jesus' name. Father, bring them, draw them, Lord. Draw them in Jesus' name. And we claim the whole family for salvation in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Father, we just seal that word on them right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. The anointing lifted. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And God is good. All right. Um, I just want to remind you, tomorrow night is Prayer Tabernacle uh, with Pastor Andrea. Amen. And you'll have a great time with her. And uh, praise the Lord. Just dial in. Uh, Pastor Andrea, are you sending out the uh, dial-in number via the chat, please, if you could do that. But I also invite you to go to our website, www.covenant-life-church.org. And uh, the, the dial-in number is right on there. Praise God if you don't get it in time for the chat. Okay? And uh, you can always contact us. Contact us through our website. Amen? Uh, we are uh, Covenant Life. Our email address is covenantlifechurch7 at gmail.com. Amen. And when you, uh, when you send a note through that email, it comes right in to both me and Apostle Jeff. We answer it personally. Okay? Uh, praise God. We like to think we're approachable. Amen. And we like you to talk to us. Amen. And we invite you to, to uh, do that. Thanks for tuning in tonight. Amen. Again, we remind you of Prayer Tabernacle, 7.30 p.m. tomorrow night. Okay? And it'll be a dial-in. Praise God. And you'll have a great time. Uh, Friday night is Table Talk right here at 7.30. Sunday, we have an awesome prophetic class with prophetess Dr. Shayla. She'll teach you how to prophesy from 1 to 2 on Sunday. And then we'll, we'll, we're, uh, we have a sermon at, on Sunday at 2.30 in the afternoon. And our wonderful pastors, Sean and Andrea, one of them is going to be preaching. Amen. Uh, praise God. It's probably Pastor Sean. Amen. We've been working on Pastor Andrea quite a bit. So Pastor Sean is dynamite. He's awesome. He's a great preacher. You're going to love him. Amen. And he's prophetic too. He prophesies too. Amen. Everybody in the team prophesies. Amen. By God's grace. Amen. Okay, beloved, we love you tonight. We thank you for tuning in. Amen. Please pray for us as we're praying for you. And I just hear the Lord say, praise God, everybody in the listening audience right now. Father, I plead the blood of Jesus over them. In Jesus' name, I claim Psalm 91. No plague will come nigh our dwelling. I claim Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Amen. Father, we plead the blood. We thank you for health and healing. By his stripes we are healed. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. Praise God. Father, we love you tonight. Lord, we thank you for this night. We thank you for the wonderful viewers. Father, please lay it upon your heart to donate. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. We, we declare all the bills are paid in Jesus' name. And the donate button is on the website. Amen. Please. Amen. So in. Praise God. And we love you in the Lord. Amen. So, Father, we seal the word right now and we charge him with it in Jesus' name. Amen. Good night, everybody. Thank you very much. This has been Apostle Dr. Linda Herbert. On behalf of my husband, Apostle Jeff and I, we want to thank you very much. And I want to thank uh, the, the team, Pastor Sean and Andrea, Elder and uh, Prophet Shayla, and all of our members. We want to thank you for tuning in and being with us and praying us through as we're praying you through. Thank you for your donations. Amen. Thank you for your love. And amen. And amen. May the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thanks for joining us tonight. Amen. Good, good night, everybody.